Hey everyone, and welcome to another video on my channel, The Nancy Drew Times. I am super excited about this video today because I'm going to be taking you guys on a little bit of the behind the scenes of Her Interactive and the general process that they take when creating a game from start to finish. Um, I spent a lot of time reading old archived Her Interactive blog posts, um, videos, and news interviews, so I'm really excited to share um, all of the pieces of information that I've compiled to kind of give a general overview of all these neat little facts about Her Interactive. Um, you can tell that a lot of people um, poured in a lot of work and love into these games, and that's why they're just so incredible and special. So without further ado, let's get started on these behind the scenes of Her Interactive and Nancy Drew games. So one of the first parts that Her Interactive focuses on when they begin creating a Nancy Drew game is ideas. They gotta have some ideas. So all of the creative people will sit around um, a table in their main conference room and they'll start, you know, asking each other questions like, well, uh, you know, where should Nancy go? And they start listing things out on the whiteboard. And what kind of mystery should she uncover? Um, a lot of times they will look through Nancy Drew books to kind of pull inspiration from. Uh, a lot of the games in the past have been based loosely off of Nancy Drew books. Um, they'll look at things like characters and storylines and plots and mysteries and locations and they'll kind of use that to kind of guide how they make their game. Um, but yeah, once some general ideas start flowing and coming together, each team can begin their creative process. So, you know, you've got people writing scripts and creating puzzles and game layouts and casting actors and actresses, so it's go time. Um, each game takes about nine months to make, and Her Interactive will work on two games at a time, um, with, where, with only three months where the two games don't overlap each other. So in that three months of the timeline where both games aren't overlapping each other, that is the period where Her Interactive will start to have another idea meeting for their third game that will be coming out the next year. So. Props to Her Interactive for being a relatively small company and coming out with two games a year and uh, focusing on a third game in the middle of working on two other games. I mean, that is an insane schedule. I mean, that's crazy. But that's also one of the reasons that made Her Interactive so special and their games um, so phenomenal. One of the first parts of the game creating process that Her Interactive focuses on in the early stages of game making are the writing and the basic design and layout of the game. This is where Nick and Kathy come in. It, it really does, the character stem from the mystery itself. So we know, like in Goth, that we were having a ghost mystery and it was based around a girl. So it went from there from, well, who was around the girl when she died? So we need family members. And obviously now we need some family members who weren't alive when she was alive. So we'll take these characters that we need to fill the story out with, and then it'll start being built up from there. Nick is the writer for the game's dialogue, while Kathy focuses on the more intricate details like characters, environment layout, and puzzles. When it comes time, these two have to get together and do a lot of research. Like, they're researching everything. Nancy drew books so they can check to see where has Nancy been before, and what characters have happened, and what mystery and plots have happened. They have to research certain types of clothes, like which characters are going to wear what. And they have to do a lot of research on history. As you know, a lot of Nancy Drew games incorporate historical facts and stories into their games, and Nick has to do a lot of that historical research when he's writing a script. Um, when Nick was researching for The Deadly Device, he had to do a lot of um, reading on Nikola Tesla to make sure that everything was factual and accurate. But a lot of the design that goes into the Her Interactive games, they do so by looking at the environment around them. So when they were, you know, creating Danger on Deception Island, that was based off the San Juan Islands in Washington State. There was an actual whale museum in the San Juan Islands that was based on the whale museum in Danger and Deception Island. For uh, the Shattered Medallion, they actually did travel to New Zealand to look around the environment and take in and absorb what was around them. Uh, for Shadow at Water's Edge, they've watched Japanese horror films so they could make sure they would nail the eerie tones and creepiness that you would feel from those horror films into the game. So these designers know how to incorporate and make you feel like you are immersed into this environment. They want you to feel that. So once Nick gives Kathy a general description of the characters, she then can sit down and map out exactly what that character should look like. 
she handpicks every article of clothing that should reflect that character's personality. She even assigns a color scheme that she thinks would work best for this character, and she gives a very fine-tuned detail of what this character should have as far as accessories, makeup, and jewelry, and scars, all of it. Then she uploads it to her interactive wiki page. Her interactive wiki page is almost kind of like a host system that all the her interactive employees can use to communicate with each other and look at what the progress of the game is. So once she uploads it to the wiki page, the artist can then download her um, comments and ideas and then start to kind of illustrate and draw the character based on Nick and Kathy's um, vision. Once the artist has fully illustrated the character, they then can start constructing a 3D model and then eventually adding some color textures and shadows and even pinpoints where the joints of the characters are so that way the character moves more like um, a human and less like a robot. So something I was surprised to learn about um, in the auditioning aspect of her interactive is that they really record their lines and audio earlier on in the game creating process. I thought it was the other way around and a much later pro part of the um, process, but it's not. It's earlier on. And the reason why is because um, the creative members need those audio files and lines for certain puzzles and certain sections of the story, so they actually have to record those earlier on, except for phone characters. Um, the reason they can record phone characters later is because phone characters aren't animated. Um, they are just voice only, so they may save those characters to record later on. Um, okay, let's change the punctuation on Hollywood. And also, I think it's probably... A long list of that'll give you a moment to breathe. So go hit that like an exclamation point. Like, like that's yes, exactly. I don't know if that was important. Of course it is. You've got the best cities, the best fans, Hollywood. Your star may be fading, but you're still the cool kids at the global lunch table. But her interactive will host um, local auditions for people to come into their studio, come into their offices, and record some lines. And uh, usually they will have a um, already posted a general description and maybe a little general bio about the character and people will have time to already go ahead and remember those lines, come up with a voice and so they come in there um, and they will read what is called sides. Um, this is um, a conversation between Nancy and whatever character they are voicing. So um, it actually can be pretty intimidating because um, you are auditioning in front of the Her Interactive um, members and they can even ask you to um, come up with a character on the spot and a new voice on the spot. So they wanna see how quick you can come up with a voice and what all tools you have to creating a persona and character. So that's really neat and really cool. And in, when they're in the studio auditioning and reading lines, Nick, the writer that we've talked about, he's in there with sometimes Kathy and they are you know, dissecting this character and really making sure that the voice actor or actress is really putting in the emotion into the words. And sometimes they may make little changes here and there like punctuation just to ensure that the lines are said with the right delivery and the exact way they intended and envisioned. When it comes to gameplay, navigation is super important, but it's also really challenging. Her interactive employees will literally create floor plans so they know exactly where objects are going and where Nancy can travel to. Here in this picture, you can see that a Her interactive employee has taken sticky notes to create the floor plan of the deadly device. Every square is an individual step that Nancy takes, with all of these arrows indicating the points where she can look at or turn to. The way the Nancy Drew games work is that there are hot spots on the screen. Take a look at the deadly device. When my cursor moves over these hotspots, so let's say the hotspot is in the right side of the screen, my cursor will change to an arrow. This indicates that Nancy can travel into that direction or interact with an object. And those hotspots kind of give the player control over where they want to go. Let's think back to Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake, that creepy eerie maze with the cemetery that's behind the log cabin. It really makes you feel like you're walking through the woods of, in some kind of maze. But in reality, it's just a square grid with coding. And there are cameras set up in a 3D model. And the way it works is that you will have these still images. 
and when you hover over hot spots so let's say you're trying to move forward and you hover over the hot spot where the forward arrow is the cursor will change and you'll click forward and the coding will change to where one image of the forest zooms into the next image of the forest so it makes you feel like you are taking a step forward when in reality you're just clicking a bunch of images to show up an image of this scene and then an image of that scene and then you add a few layers in that things that are turned on or turned off and also some memorable objects like the stump or the shoe or the yellow ribbon um, and then there you go you've got your maze and forest of things uh, in the ghost dogs of moon lake but that's how the nancy drew games in a very summarized way, pretty much work. So now let's talk about puzzles. This is one of the most important parts of the games because it's one of the reasons why we love it so much. We love all the little puzzles inside of it. So puzzles, we can actually thank to Kathy, the director um, of design, because she is the one that comes up with a lot of the puzzles and the way it looks and the where it goes and the way it functions and what it does and everything she is a huge core and foundation part of creating puzzles in the nancy drew games so once um once kathy sits down and really sketches out everything she pieces everything together she passes it along to uh jamie which is one of the artists at her interactive uh, Jamie will draw it out and make sure that every little piece looks exactly how Kathy envisions it. And once Jamie finishes um, sketching everything out and adding the color and the texture and everything that she has to add to it, she passes it on to a member of the production team. The production team is more of the intricate details of writing the codes on how the puzzle functions, like writing the code on how the player will pick it up and rotate it and put it down. And they are also the ones that add the sound effects. Like for example, let's say we're talking about the crypt and it goes to Thornton Hall and the stained glass puzzle. All of the little pieces that you have to pick up and move around, you'll hear like glass clinking and metal sounds because that's what you would hear in real life if you were picking up little small pieces of glass and inserting it into an overall stained glass image. So once it's finally um, more rendered and put together from the production team, they will pass it along to the testing team. Um, the testing team is a group that will literally play the puzzles and play the games to make sure there's no bugs or errors. Um, bugs are just um, kind of hang-ups in the game, uh, errors in the game, so if the game crashes or if characters are saying things they shouldn't be saying or something or a puzzle is not working the way it should, um, it should, it should be working. Uh, that's what a bug in a game is and that's what the testing team does. They are trying to make sure the game runs smoothly, the puzzle is fully functioning the way it should, and everything is as it's supposed to be. Throughout the entire process, the Her Interactive team will have weekly uh, meetings to make sure that the team is um, on track with where they should be with the game, and uh, just to check to make sure that the game doesn't have any holes in the logic or anything that's going to mess with the storyline, do the puzzles function the way they should. They do this every single week. Um, and throughout the process, they will do um, what they call verbal playthroughs. So um, the lead team member of each individual team, so the lead team member of the design, of the puzzles, of the story, they'll all come into the main conference room and sit around and do what they call a verbal playthrough, where they bring someone in to the meeting and they basically describe the beginning of the game. So for example, let's say Legend of the Crystal Skull. They'll say, Nancy arrives at this dark spooky house. A warning label will come across the screen to tell the player that they should play this in the dark. Lightning thunders and Nancy enters into the house where the door creaks open and there is a skeleton man there standing over a small figurine cemetery and the lightning flashes and the lights go off and uh, the skeleton man is in the dark and then the lights come back on they reappear and he is right in front of Nancy and throws some kind of dust potion and she knocks out and wakes back up and then they will ask um, the person in their meeting what would you like to do next? You have two options. You can either talk to Henry Bollet or you can talk to Renee. Which one would you rather do? 
and um, let's say the person says, um, I'd like to talk to Renee. It's like, okay, well, this is what Renee would say to you. And these are the two dialogue options that Nancy would say back. Which one do you pick? So they do like a verbal playthrough just to make sure that everything is flowing the way that it should be flowing. I want you to take a look at a picture. And in this picture shows you a little bit of the just craziness that goes into these games. What you're seeing in this picture is a pathway. Um, these pathways are kind of what determine where the game goes, but it allows the player to choose what they would like to choose. Um, and based on the player's choice, that can affect the way the next piece of dialogue comes up. Um, that's kind of what these pathways do. And it's kind of what these verbal meetings are. It's just to kind of show and make sure that everything is logical and in place the way that it should be. But once the game is fully rendered, they're not going to change any more dialogue or any more art. All the puzzles are in place. There are no more holes in the logic. They will call that game gold. And what that means is, is that that disc is ready to be replicated into a bunch of other discs that they can sell physical copies for. That game is the gold game and it is ready for production. Once it's gold and it's ready to be printed, um, the covers will be printed in Chicago. And uh, one of the uh, marketing directors will fly out to Chicago from uh, Washington and they will make sure that the covers look all good. The colors on the cover are exactly matching the scheme, uh, the color scheme that they have made for the game and everything is in tip top shape and ready to be sold. And that is one of the final steps to creating the Nancy Drew games. And I couldn't let this video pass without mentioning Little Jackalope. Um, her name is Kalina. She's been a Her Interactive employee for several years. Um, she is involved in everything, everything Her Interactive. Um, and that's why she is such an important part of this video because she plays a very vital role in everything in Her Interactive. So um, quick shout out, thank you so much Kalina, um, uh, AKA Little Jack Globe for letting me um, talk about you in this video. I really appreciate it. If you're watching this, thank you so much. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Little Jackalope. So first of all, okay, I remember being um, six, seven, eight years old playing these Nancy Drew games in 2005 and uh, with my mom and being stuck. And uh, you know, we would get on the message boards and er there were these messages signed the Little, Jack or Little Jackalope and um, that would be Kalina. Um, Kalina is involved with working the cover art, the web page, writing character bios on the website and game descriptions. She helped uh, piece together the official trailers and she was able to obtain the uh, ratings for the games. She would create the strategy guides and prep the soundtracks for the store. She would also upload the merchandise store images and all of the products on there. And she would also um, uh, make all of the blog posts a bunch of YouTube videos. She is in a lot of the social media videos. She uh, is in everything. Uh, she is very involved with her interactive and uh, very connected with the fans as well. Um, we all know her as Little Jackalope. Uh, she got that name uh, right around the, around the time that Trail of the Twister came out. Uh, there was a bunch. There was the Jackalopes in the Paws uh, exhibit and uh, the name just kind of stuck and she also really likes Jackalopes. So um, that's a pretty neat fact. And um, she actually uh, was in a game, The Silent Spy. She did the voiceover for um, the deli lady when uh, Nancy is learning how to make the cookies. Um, Kalina's voice is um, the one that's telling Nancy the directions on how to make the cookie. The cookie order shows up down there. Make it exactly as shown if you want to get paid. The more cookies you make, the wealthier you get. Um, so that's a really neat fact too. Um, but yeah, Kalina, she has been a big role in making her interactive what it is. So um, that's another awesome part and um, she's great. And um, I am going to link her YouTube page below because if you've never seen it, not only does she stream Nancy Drew games, uh, but she also streams other kinds of games as well. It has really cool, funny videos. So uh, thank you Kalina for again, letting me mention you in this video. Um, and thank you guys for watching. That was my behind the scenes video of her interactive and these Nancy Drew games that we all love to play and replay. 
Um, thank you so much for joining and subscribing to my channel. You guys mean the world to me. I love connecting with you and I love this community. Thank you so much and I'll see you again soon.